Sure Cuts A Lot gives you the ability to cut thousands of fonts with your cutting machine. You can view the available fonts in one of two ways. The first method is by clicking the Type tool in the Tools panel, and doing so reveals the text options under the Properties panel. Clicking on the Font drop-down menu will display a list of all of the fonts that are available for you to use in your Sure Cuts A Lot software. Next to the name of each font is a preview of what the font actually looks like. So you'll notice here that I don't have that many fonts to choose from, and I want to add some more. The best place to find free fonts is the internet. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to launch my web browser, and I'm going to visit google.com, and I'm going to do a search for free fonts, and click enter. The first website that comes up is 1001 free fonts. I'm going to click on that. And as a general rule of thumb, and this is not a limitation of the software, but rather a limitation of your cutting machine, it's a good idea to stick with fonts that are nice and clean, crisp, and thick. Fonts like this one may not cut very well because of how skinny or thin the lines are. Fonts like this one, Katy Berry, are nice and thick and ideal for this type of application. So to use this font in Sure Cuts A Lot, we first need to download it. Click the download button that corresponds to your operating system. In this tutorial, we'll be working in a Windows environment. So let's click on the Windows download. Most of the time when you download fonts, they'll come in zip format. It's possible that they may not be zipped. And remember, zip files are simply a compressed package that contains multiple files. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. So we've clicked to download this font. And our web browser is asking us if we want to open it or if we want to save it. You always want to save it. You never want to open it. I want to make sure that save is selected and click OK. And once I've done that, my web browser is now asking me where I want to save it to. I recommend saving it to a location that you're familiar with. It can be the desktop or it can be my documents. I personally like to work with the desktop because it's easier to clean once I'm done doing what I need to do. So I'm going to click desktop and then I'm going to hit save. Now that I've downloaded the zip file, I can close my web browser. And on the desktop is the zip file called Katy Berry. Now before we can use this in Sure Cuts A Lot, we need to unzip or decompress this file. Now remember, a zip file is kind of like a nicely packaged suitcase that contains multiple items or multiple files. So in order to unzip it, we need to double click. And in Windows XP, you'll have the option to extract all files here. In Windows Vista and Windows 7, you'll have the option just above the icons. So we're going to click Extract All Files. And doing so brings up the Extraction Wizard screen. It's telling us that it's going to help us copy files from inside a zip archive. We're going to click Next. This next screen is basically asking us to select a location to unzip these files to. We're not going to touch that because it's just going to create another folder in the same location as the original zip file. So we're going to hit Next. And then we're going to hit Finish. So here we have the newly created folder that contains our font. Now you'll notice if I put these side by side, one has the little zipper on the folder and one doesn't. This one's extracted and this one is still in the zip format. And you'll notice that this font is actually in its true form where this one is still zipped, okay? So what that means is we can actually go in and we can delete the zip file now that we have it unzipped, okay? There's no need to have it twice. So I'm going to delete the zip file. So if I open this folder, you'll see that it contains our font. So we're halfway there. Now that we have our file unzipped, there's one of two ways of installing it so that your shirt cuts a lot can use it. So let's say that you really love this font, but you don't want it to be a permanent addition in shirt cuts a lot. There's a quick way to use this font just once or whenever you'd like to use it, rather than having it available every single time you open shirt cuts a lot. So let's open Sure Cuts a lot, and there's one of two ways of loading a font temporarily. One is by highlighting the text tool here, and under the Properties panel, you'll see this little icon here that says Choose a Font File to Load. If we click on that, it'll bring up a window that is basically asking us to locate the font that we want to load. 
In this case, it's on my desktop, so I'm going to click Desktop, and it's in a folder called Katy Berry. Okay, now it doesn't have to be in that folder. The font can be in any folder you want. If you decide that you want to create a folder under My Documents called My Favorite Fonts or something like that, and you want to put all your fonts in there and pick and choose the ones that you want to use temporarily, you can do that. In this case, I have it in a folder called Katy Berry, and I'm going to double click on it now. Okay, now it's telling us the font has been loaded into Shortcuts a lot and can now be selected from the list of fonts. Please note that the font will automatically be unloaded when you quit. So like I said, this is just a temporary way to load this font. In the next step, I'll show you how to permanently load the font if that's what you wish to do. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to click on the font drop-down menu here, and you'll notice that we have this new font in here called Katy Berry. So I can click, and I can click on the mat, and there it is. So now I'm going to close shortcuts a lot, and I'm going to reopen it. And you'll notice, I'm going to grab my text tool or type tool, and I'm going to click on the font drop down, and you'll notice that Katie Berry's not there anymore. Okay, so let's say that we want to permanently place that in there and make it available every single time we open shortcuts a lot because we love the font and we know we're going to use it a lot. What we need to do is take that font and load it into the Windows Fonts folder. So not only will this font be available in Shortcuts a lot, but it'll also be available in programs like Microsoft Word. So I'm going to minimize my Shortcuts a lot, and I'm going to leave this window open that contains my font. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and move it off to the side. Next, I'm going to click on Start and go to My Computer. In Windows 7 and Windows Vista, it's just Computer. And then I'm going to double click on the C drive. You may or may not have to click this button. This is just a security precaution in Windows XP. I'm going to click Show the Contents of this folder. Next, you'll need to open the Windows folder. And finally, locate the Fonts folder. Anytime you want to install a new font permanently, this is where you need to copy or drag that font to make it available in Shortcuts a lot. Okay? So I've got this font here. I'm literally going to take the font, click, hold, and drag it into this folder. Okay, now watch when I let go, a little box is going to come up really quick. It's just going to flash real quick saying that it's installing the font. Okay, watch. There we go. And that's it. The font's now successfully installed. Now if we take a look in the font list here, you'll see that it's in here, Katy Berry. If we try to take it and add it again, it'll tell us that it's already installed and it won't let you do it. Now a common mistake that occurs during font installation Users will take the entire new font in its folder and try to add it into the fonts folder located in the Windows directory. Now, if this folder, this new font folder, contains anything other than a font, it may not work. If it contains a text file, a readme of some sort, you'll probably end up getting an error. So it's important that you open the folder that contains the font and drag only the font into the Windows fonts folder. Now this is also true with the original zip file. Sometimes you'll find a font and you'll download it in zip format, and I'll show you here. This is the zip file that we deleted, and you'll try to take that and load it into the font folder. Well, that won't work, okay? So you need to make sure that it's unzipped and that you're only dragging the font itself, okay? And the font, you'll know it's a font because of the icon. The icon will look like this, TT, or the letter O, okay, this is also a true type font. So now that we have the font there, I'm going to close these windows and go back into shortcuts a lot. And now I'm going to click on this reload the fonts button, okay, because we just installed a new font while shortcuts a lot was open. So we need to have shortcuts a lot reload its list of fonts. If we click on the drop down here, you'll notice that that Katie Berry's not in here. But now if we reload, okay, and now we click on it, there it is, Katy Berry's there, okay? So we basically told Shortcuts a lot to rescan that folder that we added that file to, and it's found the new one. So we can go ahead and click, and we can use it. Now you'll notice that since we installed it permanently into the Windows font directory, I can close Shortcuts a lot, and then when I reopen it, I can click on my type tool, and click on the drop down and it's still there. 
Okay, so we've permanently added it to that list. Now just a little tidbit here, in addition to loading the font manually here, you can do the same thing under the text menu by clicking load font file. Okay, so this and this are the same exact thing. Now one other feature that I want to show you when it comes to fonts is this little heart with the plus sign next to it. Now over the course of a few weeks or a few months, you're going to start to identify fonts that you really like to work with, that are your favorites. Okay. Now what you can do is you can organize those in a list. So let's say that Katy Berry is one of my favorite fonts. I can highlight it, and then I can click on this heart with the plus sign. It's add the font to your favorites list. Okay, I'm going to click, and I'm going to click on another one here. I'm going to click on Tahoma, and I'm going to click that. And now you can click on the View drop-down menu and select Favorites. Now you'll notice that when we click on this drop-down, we only have two fonts here, two of the favorite fonts that I just selected. Okay, so there's Tahoma and there's Katy Berry. Now if you want to remove one, you can highlight it, and now you'll notice how you have a heart with a minus next to it. Okay, we can remove this from our favorites now. So the only favorite we have is Katy Berry. So again, we can go to All Fonts, and we can find another one here. And we can add it to our favorite font list by clicking here. Okay, and now I can click the drop down and go to favorites. And there they are. There's the two that I selected. Okay, now additionally, let's go to all. And I'm going to click on impact. And I'm just going to write test. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to select another font. I'm going to select. Uh, this one here, symbol, and I'm just going to write a few characters, okay. Now in addition to viewing all fonts and favorite fonts, you can also view the fonts that are being used in the current project, okay. So if we click this, it basically narrows down the two fonts that I selected. So this basically allows me to quickly identify the fonts that I'm using in my project.